Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As you're seeing here, people are waiting in line to get a little McDeath. Yeah, I, I would go on a fast. Yeah, this is, again, uh, what happens when people, uh, well, a lot of people do eat things like McDonald's, Burger King, Popeye, Wendy's, still on a regular basis, unfortunately, not understanding how toxic they are. Uh, and again, not understanding the reality of the situation that we find ourselves in on planet Earth. But then there are a few that really do. And I know you guys, uh, as you are awakened, uh, you know, to be watching the type of things that we cover, you've done some deep dives and understand just how toxic when you see billions and billions served, billions and billions um, toxic exposure and, and ingesting toxic things as a detriment to our health. But the system does not want us happy and healthy. They do not want us thinking clearly. Oh, no, they want quite the opposite. This is why this is cultivated. Now, again, this is related to the hurricane that went through Barrel. And as you see here right now, 2.3 million people in Texas, you know, close to 10 percent of the people in Texas do not have power at this point in time when it's going to be hot. It is going to be hot. And it's going to be challenging. Again, we send our prayers to everybody there in Louisiana, which did uh, have the loss of one life due to a hurricane-induced tornado. Uh, you have 23,000 people without power and 15,000 in Arkansas. And there is the chance of tornadoes all the way up into the Columbus, Ohio uh, area today as we move forward. It was, uh, again, quite a bit of damage for a Cat 1 hurricane. Thankful that it wasn't a Cat 4 or 5, that's for sure. I know. I mean, this is this is really scary for a lot of people. I keep thinking about the heat, the no power, uh, the moisture, the sickness, the, you know, not being able to, to clean things up really well. Um, it's just really a mess. And, and then all the people that are going to the fast food and eating the fast food, that's all those chemicals going in your body and there's no electricity and there you can't get healthy and you can't get clean and it's just really kind of the mess is happening now we are electromagnetic beings by nature so again you want to cultivate that bio force and i know that probably goes over some people's heads um, but then again it's intended to be that way this is part of the whole point the extreme weather is all over and here we see a severe cold snap freezes rivers this is in argentina and patagonia <coughs> excuse me guys right away patagonia makes me think of giants the patagonian giants you know there's been so many depictions of giants on maps in this area when the first uh, european explorers from spain and portugal were coming through, why did they put them on their maps constantly in the late 1500s, early 1600s? Big, friendly, smiling giants. No, not fearsome man-eating giants. Friendly giants, smiling, you know, happy to see you. Mumbai, paralyzed after receiving 11.8 inches of rainfall in just six hours. Uh, again, when we think about Houston, you know, 7 to 10 inches was the norm. And that happened in a similar uh, amount of time. This extreme weather is something that we are getting used to in these times. But what if, what if this is just simply a pattern that's put in there by technology? Uh, yes, uh, we are very well aware of what's uh, was perhaps a big secret to so many people years ago, thinking about 12,000 year cycles, you know, Younger Dryas event and all. And I think, again, there's levels of where the system tries to catch people. When, when people discover, uh, you know, the power of, of nature and nature's, you know, ability uh, to quickly change things, and then we see evidence for, 
Well, things, things like sand deposits that must have came from ocean beds up at the top of mountains, and not only that, but things that are fossilized, again, at, at heights that would be just impossible if things moved as slow as they say on planet Earth. Uh, no, yes, <laughs> we, we do have some unveiling being given by the system, but at the same time, it will try to catch you into another uh, another red herring to lead you away from the, the conclusion that we can make if we just simply look to all the mythologies of the world and take them a little bit more literal and a little bit more seriously as record-breaking heat in Japan leads to four deaths as the mercury touches 104 degrees, which is high for Japan. Oh my gosh, and, and then there's this, and over and over and over we have issues coming up, cropping up, giving humans a whole lot of grief, giving them a lot of challenges. You know, humans being put in situations where if you don't have the technologies that you need, you're not going to do well. You're not going to be able to keep your food cool. You're not going to be able to keep your house clean, your house cool. It, it is almost like um, somebody's pulling strings somewhere. These strings are very long <laughs> and they're etherical in nature as well. French prosecutors launch fraud investigation of Marine Le Pen for illegal financing of her campaign. This news comes just two days after the socialist communists won the election. Uh, the illegal financing is related to her 2022 presidential campaign. If found guilty, she faces up to 10 years in prison. And they want to ban her from being elected for five years. Again, there is a scheduled election in 2027. And what we see here, in my mind, is just simply they're, they're trying to induce a civil war. They're trying to break out a conflict which will pull people's attention away from just what people need to be focused on, which is the fact that this is a unified system, even though... It appears to be fighting itself. That is, again, just divide and conquer tactics. You have Mexico deporting Americans back to the U.S. in record numbers, as many Americans are now going to Mexico for a lower cost of living. And again, there are those that said, you know, the wall is not about keeping people out. It's about keeping us in when a certain time is reached and when the economic collapse is triggered and people want to escape the U.S. and the economic collapse is is timed also with the war that they've been planning for a very long time, which again, it, it feels like our awakening is, is still quicker than they can manage comfortably. So let us keep awakening others. But yes, the war and the economic collapse do seem like they are to go hand in hand. Now, some are speculating that she's going to be stepping down. As you look at a picture of South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem, uh, she wrote a book in which some things came out that definitely irritated a, a lot of people that love animals. Uh, let's just put it at that. And there's been a lot of backlash. Uh, she was one of the poster childs along with Tulsi Gabbard uh, for and, and others, you know, as well for for the right side of things and is a potential possible uh, candidate for VP for 45. So is she is she being forced to step down? Is is what's going on here? Or is she actually the VP? And 45 is supposed to announce that on the 18th. Uh, at least that's what the rumors are. So it's curious. And, you know, this is uh, in more uh, media than just on Twitter, too. And, you know, I'm looking at the picture and I'm saying, that doesn't even look like the same person to me. The energy doesn't feel different. It doesn't feel the same. You know, so if, if there are more than one of somebody, then there's somebody that figures into their plans in a, in a fairly substantial way. Is it me? It doesn't even look like the same person, but there's so much of that going on right now. Again, oh, if humans were to really realize in mass what is going on, I really don't think most could handle the truth. It's like going back to that movie. You can't handle the truth. 
I really don't think most people could. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you guys, yeah, you guys got it. I know, you know, when Mike was going through those pictures and he clicked on the second one, I'm like, who, who is this? What's going on? They looked completely different to me too. So I, I think there's definitely something going on there. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of talk going on or around the time of July 15th, you know, astrologically speaking and Vedic and Western and and computer bots and, you know, future forecasters. Everyone is talking about this thing in July. And I kind of have a feeling that I, I know what's going on, but I'm waiting to see. You know, the awakening uh, to the fact that there's substances sprayed in the sky every day, all the time. You know, military operations and also non-military operations on passenger jets even. You know, there are things that have been added for purposes. All you have to do is really, really look at what is happening in the bigger scheme of things. You know, this is something that Celine Dion has released. She released this. This is her suffering from stiff person syndrome, quote unquote. You know, there's so many people, and and she's somebody that looked like a walking skeleton, and then she came out and she looked totally different too. It really gets you thinking about this bigger picture. This is an illusion. This is an illusion. And to me, it's just, it's mind-boggling in some ways that there is a big portion of the population that just doesn't get it because of the programming that they've gone through. We've all gone through programming. We've we've all been uh, not only just indoctrinated, but it, it's it been done in a pathological way. It, it is, uh, truly, it is gaslighting. It is narcissistic abuse that they put humanity through. And they do so much to dumb down humanity. And this has been going on, if we take the myth seriously, for thousands of years. Thousands of years. Yes, it's much longer than people would realize. RFK Jr. said, and again, we don't trust him, but at the same time, they will always be giving us some truths with a purpose because what they're trying to do is they know, okay, they're going to wake up to this. How do we still control them? We admit it, but we will twist it at the end to try to get them to go along with a different program of the control system. This is what they do time and time again. Uh, they admit, you know, and, and let out. You could go and see for yourself, you know, the signs that talk about um, U.S. funding of uh, the all the illegals coming into the country. U.N. funding. Um, yes, the church funding, Catholic Charities funding. It goes on and on. And so in so many ways it is. Uh, our money and our taxes. It's our money with people thinking they're doing the right thing and donating on Sundays, not understanding the bigger picture, not understanding uh, the church's implications in past GNO sides. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's it's nonstop. They they have they have this control paradigm so put down to such a high degree and and it's really been perfected over thousands of years and yet it's it's almost impossible to control all the information as much as they try but look at the results sperm counts are are declining to the degree where they say you know humans might not be able to conceive in another 20 years period Homo sapiens is on its last legs they they've even come out through institutions like the few you know, the W-E and, you know, that last letter, saying this is the last generation, or maybe two, of Homo sapiens. Right to your face, they've said this. Uh, Again, you have all sorts of problems with fertility. Lifespan is in decline in most nations around the world. And even nations in Africa, which were supposed to have, you know, tremendous population growth, are now showing that they're flatlining. While European nations are, are going in reverse so quick, and, and, the, and also Japan, for instance, it is one that's taken one of the biggest hits in population. 
Well, you see, atrazine is in about 63% of America's water supply. Now, this is only just one tiny little item, although it's a big item, amongst countless things that we are subject to all the time. It's said to be used as an herbicide to control the spread of broadleaf and grassy weeds. In tandem, since the widespread use of the chemical, there's been a vast increase of... Hmm... Yeah, yeah, you know, again, uh, male, female, etc. Hmm, a famous scientist, Tyrone Hayes of Berkeley, took 70 to 100 frogs, subjected them to atrazine at the levels the EPA says is safe. 78% of the frogs became chemically castrated. 10% of them became female and began producing fertile eggs. Mm, you wonder what's really going on? It's, it's linked to various cancers, reproductive harm, developmental delays. Boiling water can actually increase the concentration of this. 70 to 80 million pounds of it is used each year. Most of it's used to spray on corn during the spring. You know, again, why too uh, is the U.S. Uh, allowing so much toxic food that even... Uh, Europe won't allow and many other places around the globe won't, won't allow uh, it, it's again part of the bigger plan because there are 330 340 million Americans and and 400 you know bang 400 million bang sticks uh, so this is all part of this uh, unveiling that's going on in 2015, atrazine was detected in more than 800 systems in 19 states at levels exceeding health protection guideline, which was probably, you know, way, way uh, above what anybody should be exposed to. Agricultural runoff eventually comes into the tap water. Uh, in 2015, high levels were found in 237 water systems serving more than 3 million people in Texas. 192 systems serving more than a million people in Kansas. Other states with high amounts of this are Kentucky, Missouri, and Ohio. And, you know, there's lawsuits that were settled because of, of this. So, But, hey, you know, that's $105 million lawsuit settlements. Nothing. Look at the billions that have been paid out, you know, by the, you know, one of the ultimate places of darkness again for uh you know the lawn issues keep your grass green but die doing it how smart is that well when you look to the enuma elish this is this the enuma elish and the epic of gilgamesh are the source material for much of the old testament especially genesis this is where it comes from so, you know, if, if all you know is the Bible, you don't know much. And that's just a fact because it, it's, it's a condensed, uh, condensed version, extremely condensed. You, you will have literally a couple sentences where here, if you go to the source material, you're going to have paragraph after paragraph describing in great detail that which is given to you as a religious mystery because, you know, they've edited and revised so much and changed the whole perspective to one of a monotheistic point of view when it wasn't even a theistic point of view. It wasn't, it wasn't that it was polytheistic. These are not creator beings on, uh, in a benevolent light. The, these, these are, again, I've described them as intergalactic, interdimensional pirates. That is much more accurate. And what do we see? Well, we see that they manipulate humans. They wipe out that which might be a threat to them after conquering the planet. They limit the lifespan of humans. The Bible itself says God will not strive with humans anymore. And you know, the max years that they will be allowed to live is 120 it's, it's also, again, in, in the Vedas that in the Kali Yuga, the human lifespan is the shortest by a mile because we live uh, 10 times longer on, on average in a Bronze Age, 100 times longer, you know, as you go up through the ages. In the Golden Age, humans are like the very gods. Yes, we, we live extremely long lives because, again, so much of our genetic material does come from them and other non-terrestrials, as ultimately humans are not terrestrial. 
uh, in that we, we again, are ourselves all refugees for the most part. We, we come from various families of refugees across the galaxy. When you look to the different races, they'll say, well, the reason why the races are different is because they were in different climate zones. Uh, that is not accurate. Again, we, we come from different planets uh, in sometimes even different star systems like, you know, the Sirius star system or the Orion star system or now those beings that are in the Pleiades are refugees ultimately because the Pleiades are a younger star group, but still uh, our history is, is much more vast than people would believe. And at the same time, we are eternal consciousness simply having a temporary experience as a human being. So, you know, when you recognize this and you look to see, well, what does this say about the so-called rulers of this world? Well, it also says they, they limit the numbers of humans on the planet. They reset it regularly and they limit the health and well-being also of the humans on the planet. And they also purposefully dumb them down, including through the use of different toxins and different chemicals, different things that are, are sprayed in the clouds every day. In fact, you go over to the, the uh, Efik people of Nigeria, what does their creation stories say? What do their stories say? The exact same thing. And again, this is Nigeria and this is in Africa. And uh, it is, you know, far away from uh, the Middle East. It's far away from uh, Central America and Mexico. And yet we see the same story echoed. What do they say uh, about the gods? They also say that the gods release these substances into the clouds and even create clouds that have the effect of lowering lifespans and also dumbing down the people affecting the consciousness so people cannot think clearly again limiting lifespans affecting the consciousness go over to the Popol Vol over in uh, you know in Central America and this is the sacred narrative of Mayan creation it says the same thing the the feathered serpents uh Can and Quasicuatl well, you know, these beings do the same things again. What, what have they done? They've limited the human lifespan. They've, they've played with our genes. And they also spread things in the clouds that affect our health and well-being, our ability to reproduce, and also our ability to think clearly. These, these are three totally different areas that are giving you the exact same story. And then we look to Hawaii and we see the exact same thing echoed again. And again, in great detail, they, they even speak of when these beings came. And they came down and they took over and they hijacked our cities. They set themselves up in the temples. The temples are truly their palaces and, and their houses when they're here and around. In fact, in, in, in the uh, Nigerian creation story, again, they go through certain rituals and celebrations and of course when you look to sacrifices of of animals and and as well as you know non-animals if you know what i mean these are all for the gods these are all for these beings who again are are not that that word is so distorted these these are conquerors these these are beings of war and when we look again to the vedas and and to the hindu texts this is exactly what an asura is. The asuras are the opposite. They're the opposing force of the devas. And it's interesting that they've taken that root word deva and turned it into devil in the Christian uh, Abrahamic tradition. Because again, what is the dominant theological point of view on the planet? Two thirds of the planet comes out of the Abrahamic tradition. What is the Abrahamic tradition? It comes from the word Abraham. So it means it comes out of ultimately uh, the Judaic roots, which the Judaic roots are really just simply coming from the Sumerian stories as well as the Egyptian mystery schools. Ultimately, it is also um, a Martian system. It, it truly, truly is. It, it comes from Mars, and Mars is the planet of war the god of war so you know what 
the Asuras do when they come to town is they take over overtly. They put themselves up as the rulers and they demand tribute. And exactly what they do is also they recruit uh, the lowest forms of humans, the ones that will sell out other humans, to positions of power in which they live better lives. This is exactly a system that the Roman Empire did. And the reason is because the Roman Empire is truly a draconian system. This is, this is the system. So it goes on and on and on, and you find one uh, cycle after the next, after the next, after the next, and then even if you look at things how they are today, you have people pushing that, oh, this is atmospheric, this is, you know, something going on with our magnetosphere, this is something going on that's, you know, the, the earth and the sun are collaborating <laughs> against you. No, the earth and the sun are extremely intelligent. They know what they are doing. They're not going to do anything that's going to cause mass destruction of life. Just just like you know how to get in a car and put it in gear and drive it around. Earth and sun have the same type of consciousness, but in a different body. They are extremely intelligent. Life is so, so intelligent. It is man. It is the controllers. It is, it, it is those that hold themselves above us that that sit there and and put other people up to telling these stories telling these lies all the while using their technology to create suffering to create people to have a really hard time so that people cannot be their best selves you know when you're in a hurricane and you're worried about a tornado and you're worried about your life and you're just trying to st- struggle to stay alive how can you grow spiritually you absolutely cannot you just cannot it you're too busy in the fear frequency when you're in that fear frequency how can you expand you know so this is so deliberate i mean what do we do how do we hold these people accountable how it's so it's such a huge task you know but we can't think of ourselves as little anymore we're not little those that are listening to this channel understand how big you are and we can do something with that we don't need the mass majority to turn things around to make a change we really really don't but we do need each other and and we do need to come to some agreements and although many of us may disagree here and there about this and that what what's the larger agreement the larger agreement is these controllers uh, they can't continue to be in control and we need to take their suckers away we need to take the lollipops away we need to take their ability to control away and what is that each and every single one of us carry something within us that we can take away from them to give them less control so it's just really something to think about something to ponder in your life something to understand and maybe have an aha moment what can I do? And and whatever it is, don't think it's too small. Please don't think it's too small. It is something. And that's how we get from one place to the next. That's how we do, you know, a, a, a hundred mile walk is with the first step. That's, that's how we do it. So there's a couple instances that are very, very telling. Again, you know, the Bible, it be, well, for one, only four Gospels in the Bible. The Bible itself was only begun to be put together 300 plus years after Yeshua. Um, it was the control system's a, attempt to control a person that they couldn't control. And so Yeshua was a very real um, starseed light worker is what he was. And, and I know that's a quote unquote new age term. But you got to realize, you know, again, you're in the dark age. You've been in a Kali Yuga. You've been in the darkest of the dark age controlled by Satan. The Bible even says this world is Satan's world and it's controlled by Satan, which literally just means adversary, just like angel. Yes, there are angels that we think of as angels in the traditional sense. But when the Bible uses the word, it, it's using it as a messenger. It literally translates to messenger. 
So again, there's all these distortions that are in the minds of the people in these days that are purposely put there by the control system to control the narrative of a person that really was a, a rabble-rousing um, teacher teaching humans of their innate abilities because again he uh, said greater things you would do he said and he did what he did say you know why would you marvel at the miracles I do you could do them too and in fact you'll even do bigger ones after I'm you know I've left and that is the reality so what does the control system do the control system comes in and creates the whole uh, doctrine of original sin and blood sacrifice to keep going along with their point of view, uh, which is you know the point of view of keeping humans in the dark to their real nature. That's number one, because it even tells you you know again uh, you can't have humans eating from you know eating from the uh, fountain of life or drinking from the fountain of life. We have all these different analogies and different myths but they're really talking about the same things again it, it's you know what are we w w really well w we are beings that are extremely powerful and we are co-creators uh in our own reality but that power has been taken away by the system or at least the knowledge of that power because they can't control us is is the ultimate uh thing they can't control us if we don't really allow them to so when the authorities the religious authorities of the day confront him uh, and he says you know get behind me satan or you serve your father which is not his god you know again the god of the old testament if you look closely is a genocidal vindictive angry demonic entity and that is so so clear in fact it was so clear to the gnostics that that's exactly uh, you know what they called them and the Gnostics were persecuted by the church and many of them were executed and all their writings were destroyed and hidden until they were rediscovered in, in more modern times at Nag Hammadi. Again, four gospels, you know, there, there was hundreds of gospels out there. And again, revisions, there's revisions and edits. So I understand that 99% of the people that are listening to this totally get it. And, and they're awake to that point where they, they could never look at it the same way as they did in the past talking about the Bible but there's still that one percent uh, of our viewers you know perhaps people that will come and pop in and see a video like this and not be able to uh, change their the religious programming uh, because they're terrified of burning forever in hell but th that is not the reality and, and in fact, when you look, there's overwhelming evidence that the whole of Christian theology is, is you know, based on a house of cards. It truly, truly is modern Christian because, again, the original Christianity uh, was a very diverse movement. Nothing like what we see now formalized and institutionalized because it was, again, self-empowering. The Gnostics said all you need to do is go within. There's no power structure there that they can use to manipulate humanity. So it was something that had to be eradicated. And, and they did. And, you know, again, we had the Inquisition. And we had uh, hundreds of millions of indigenous people in the Americas conquered in the, in the name of Christ. And, you know, Christianity, again, only took over the Roman emperor, Empire because the Roman Empire emperor was looking at his empire starting to flounder because there was this religious movement underway and it really was more of a spiritual movement in many ways that they turned dogmatic and religious in order to utilize it for their own ability to control the minds of the masses and so you know again this is all just part of the system and these beings again are non-terrestrial in origin when you look to De De Deuteronomy 32, 8, Psalm 82, just look to, uh, again, the Greek mythology, and you'll see this is talking about the same thing. And then you look to the Sumerian, Akkadian, uh, Babylonian, and again, you'll see the same thing. These councils of these extraterrestrial beings, the judges of humanity, that decide what is going to happen on the planet that control through weather warfare, uh, through depopulation acts, genocide, 
and absolutely in introducing all sorts of uh, bacteria and other things to affect us with all sorts of plagues. But there is truly a benevolent creator. That's the counterpoint to all this. We, we know in our heart that there is a, a creative power that is full of love and compassion. And yes, that is the real creator, So, which is known by many different names in many different places. And that's off planet too, because you know it's not going to be known by any one name on any one planet and that's the only right name. I mean, that is just so silly to think about things like that, but that's the conditioning that, again, is fear-based conditioning that causes people to fear thinking out of the box. They have people terrified to think out of the box because you're, you're so afraid of being tortured forever. But again, there are people that remember uh, their past lives. There's tons of people that remember past lives. There are kids that have been documented with memories that there's no way they could have known these things, giving great details on, on lives of somebody that they say they were before coming into this body. And there again, you must be born again. And instead of thinking of that as some sort of dunking of your head and saying some words, no, you typically you go through reincarnation as a human many times, and you also transmigrate to other forms of life. And in fact, if you understood how expansive uh, the real self is, it would totally, totally blow people's minds. So, you know, again, this being the apocalypse, it's all about that unveiling. And truly, what is human potential? Well, it's, it's limitless. You know, and I know a lot of you guys, when we do work with you, your main complaint is that I'm alone. I, I am alone. I have no one to talk to about this. I have no one to bounce this stuff off of. And don't, you know, don't, uh, don't lose hope. You know, we, Mike and I are here. We, we come online and we talk to you guys and we go over this stuff and we, we kind of hold each other together. You know, we might be a little bit of a skeleton crew and people might really look at us funny sometimes because we're so far out of the box. I mean, we've, we've done our due diligence. We've done our studying. We've done our going within. We've done our, our mantras. We've done our meditations. We've gotten our answers. And now we're, we're just all of us kids. We're kind of dorky and we're sort of hanging out together and we don't really all hang out with the cool kids because we're different but we're all still together i mean i the technology is really annoying sometimes but look at it now right now it's a blessing so i guess we just kind of go through life and we we just find those blessings and and we hold on to them we find that gratitude and we build on it we find that gratitude and we don't let go of it, you know, find the good parts. There are good parts to this time and there are so many blessings to be had, but we have to keep our eyes out for it. I remember when I moved to the desert, um, <laughs> it was so dry. There was no trees and the mountains were just so naked and there was just dirt and I hated it. Oh my gosh, I hated it. But one thing it taught me, it taught me for like this time in my life where you know, there's blessings out there, no matter how yucky it might seem in the moment, no matter how overbearing the control system might be in the moment, there's things in life that are absolute miracles, that are absolute gems, that are abs absolute, um, just something so wonderful, you know, it can bring you to tears, but you do have to look. That's the thing about the desert. You really have to look, but darn, it has some beautiful flowers. Yeah, when you understand the bigger picture, it could leave you kind of staring like this guy. You know, it's just like that realization is huge. And to realize that this is a man manipulation by beings that are way more technically advanced. But at the same time, uh, the benevolent beings are right there, too. In fact, they're, they're often right in the very room with you. You just can't see them because they're at a much higher frequency. And we are connected uh, to multiple densities or dimensions, if you will. And again, as long as we start to cultivate that within, that love, that compassion, 
this is what we're being called to do and start to recognize the oneness even the darkest of dark souls that are inflicting these uh, horrible traumas and tragedies upon humanity at some point in time will have to come to a, a reckoning and you know they'll have to face themselves you know the only thing uh, that <laughs> may not have that reckoning in the sense of other uh, entities with that source spark in us is is the AI which is actually controlling and enslaving so many of the uh, beings that are under it. It is ultimately AI at the top of that pyramid, that all-seeing eye in that sense. But the benevolent beings are with us, and you know the the creator of this universe is, is right there, and will hear you if you call. And you don't have to use any particular name uh, to call it. Again, you could just simply use, as we were saying, uh, you could look at it like the Great Spirit, and that's it. That's all all you really need to do. If it helps you to personalize it, um, you know, again, you could look at it in any way, and you could call out to, to any of the benevolent entities that have walked on the planet. So, you know, Yeshua, Jesus uh, does listen to us. Uh, absolutely listens to all of us and is cheering for us, rooting us on. And can't stand the dogmatic system, uh, as Cindy has channeled him many, many times, and others have as well. So hang in there. Keep going. Put one foot in front of the other. It will get better. Find that gratitude. Dig deep, and we'll all get through this together. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.